This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Coming up on September 17th on the relatively new The Zone pay-per-view, Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin will finally meet for the third time. It will have been more than four years since they last met on September 15th, 2018, when Canelo was awarded a somewhat controversial 12-round majority decision. A lot has changed since then. HBO has since left the boxing business altogether, and Canelo and Golovkin appeared to be on diverging paths. Golovkin had just four fights since then. In June 2019, Gennady scored a fourth-round stoppage against Steve Rolls. In October of that year, Golovkin won a close unanimous decision against Derevianchenko to win the vacant IBF middleweight strap. In December 2020, Gennady won by 7th round stoppage against Camille Zarameta. Then after being out of action for all of 2021, Golovkin returned in April of this year when he defeated Ryota Murata in a unification bout to add the WBA super duper middleweight strap. Canelo has had eight fights since they last met. In December 2018, Canelo stopped Rocky Fielding in three rounds at super middleweight to win the regular WBA belt. In May 2019, Canelo defended his unified WBC WBA super duper middleweight crown in a unification bout against IBF middleweight champ Daniel Jacobs. About Canelo won by a close and competitive unanimous decision. In November 2019, Canelo jumped all the way up to 175 when he beat Sergey Kovalev by 11th round stoppage to win the WBO light heavyweight belt. In December 2020, it was back down to 168, where he won a lopsided unanimous decision against Callum Smith to win the WBA Super Duper and the vacant WBC at Super Middle. February 2021, Canelo defended those belts with a third round stoppage against Avni Yildirim. In May 2021, he scored an eighth round stoppage in a unification bout against Billy Joe Saunders to add the WBO belt. And then last November, Canelo became the undisputed super middleweight world champion when he won by 11th round stoppage against Caleb Plant. A few months back in May, it was back up to 175 where Canelo challenged WBA super duper light heavyweight champion Dimitri Bivol. And Canelo lost by 12 round unanimous decision. This was only the second official loss in his career, and his first loss since he was beaten by the great Floyd Mayweather Jr. nine years earlier. But in the eyes of many, if not most observers, myself included, Canelo was very fortunate to escape his first bout against Gennady with a draw. The first fight between Canelo and Golovkin happened back on September 16th, 2017. Going into that one, Gennady was the undefeated unified IBF WBC WBA super duper middleweight champion, and Canelo had a rightful claim as the lineal middleweight world champion. Canelo jumped out to an early lead where his superior speed and reflexes gave him the edge. Canelo was calm, measured, defensively sound, and countering effectively. On the other hand, Golovkin had an uncharacteristically slow start. It almost seemed as if Triple G may have been a little overwhelmed by the magnitude of the event, and he was also having some difficulty coping with Canelo's speed. Golovkin started finding a better groove in the middle rounds, where he was jabbing better and working off the jab more effectively. Canelo was continuing to box well and he was still landing some nice counters. But even though Canelo was proving to be a slippery target with a sneaky offense, Golovkin had seized command of the momentum during the middle portions of the fight, and he was landing the better shots. Once Gennady established a better rhythm, Canelo was exerting a lot of energy with his footwork. Triple G was effective at cutting off the ring, and he was generally landing better more often than not with good consistency. This trend continued throughout the final stretch of the fight. Each boxer was having moments and the action was fairly competitive throughout the bout. But at the end of the day, Golovkin appeared to be the clear winner in the eyes of most. The official judges saw it differently, however. 
Dave Moretti had it 115 to 113 for Golovkin. Don Trella had it a draw at 114 apiece. And Adelaide Bird inexplicably scored the bout 118 to 110 in favor of Canelo, which was in no way reflective of the action that transpired inside the ring. So officially, the first bout between Canelo and Golovkin was ruled a draw, but most observers felt Golovkin deserved to win. The rematch happened almost exactly a year to the day later. Golovkin had been stripped by the IBF, so it was his unified WBC WBA super duper against Canelo's valid lineal claim. The first round began as a tactical affair at mid range. Gennady was working behind his jab and getting off to a faster start than he did the last time, while Canelo was looking to stay at mid range and hold his ground. They both looked very focused, and they were both throwing short, crisp punches, and these are trends that would continue throughout the contest. In a lot of ways, the flow and momentum of the rematch felt eerily similar to their first encounter. Canelo tended to be doing the better work over the first half of the fight, whereas Golovkin tended to be doing the better work over the later half. But these were all very competitive rounds, many of which constituted an absolute judging nightmare. There were simply an awful lot of close rounds that were tricky to score. But despite the similar flow, the dynamics were much different this time around. This was a much better, far more entertaining encounter than we had seen a year earlier. This one just had a heightened sense of intensity, where both boxers were battling it out and giving as well as they took. At the end of the day, Canelo was awarded a majority decision victory, with Glenn Feldman scoring it 114 apiece, while judges Dave Moretti and Steve Weisfeld both scored it 115 to 113 in favor of Canelo. The big difference between this fight and the first fight stems from a huge strategic gamble by Canelo, a gamble that paid big dividends for middleweight supremacy. In their first fight, Canelo was looking to counter and get off first when he could, and that was true here again in the rematch. Only this time, Canelo was determined to stay at mid-range while employing these types of tactics. And in the first fight, Canelo was far more apt to back out of range with lots of movement. This led to Canelo frequently finding himself on the ropes, and this is where Gennady often does his best work. Canelo did his best not to stay pinned in any one position for too long in the first fight, but by constantly fighting off the back foot with lots of movement, Canelo was using up a lot of energy, and he was also giving Golovkin the forward momentum that he generally thrives on. Canelo was once again looking to counter and get off first whenever he could in the rematch, but this time around, Canelo was determined to keep the fight at mid-range. By keeping things at mid-range, Canelo still held a tactical advantage, but by holding his ground, he conserved more energy while still maintaining the necessary execution of solid countering and getting off first whenever he could. Canelo still had some lulls in activity, but by keeping in range, he was able to wisely pick and choose his spots while preventing Golovkin from establishing his trademark forward aggression. Gennady Golovkin is 40 years old. Gennady is no spring chicken, and his skills have eroded at least a little bit since they last met four years ago. Gennady is also a career middleweight, so this will be his first bout at 168, and he will be facing the only undisputed super middleweight world champion in the relatively short history of the weight class. This is a feat Canelo accomplished in a span of less than 11 months, where he defeated three undefeated champions to earn the undisputed crown. For the aging Golovkin, this is a very daunting task on paper, especially since in more recent years, most people have assumed Canelo would win a third fight against the aging Gennady, especially since Canelo seemed to be getting better and hitting his prime stride, whereas Golovkin seemed to be in decline. On the other hand, Canelo is coming off of his first loss in a very long time, and that in itself makes this trilogy fight inherently more intriguing. Golovkin may be making his super middleweight debut, but even though he has long seemed perfectly suited for the weight class, at his age, perhaps not needing to drain down quite as much can actually be something that works in his favor. 
Then with Canelo jumping around so many divisions with such great frequency, sooner or later this type of thing is apt to catch up with him. And perhaps that time is now. But the most important thing Gennady has working to his benefit is the fact that his style has a proven track record of matching up well against Canelo. Styles make fights might sometimes feel like an overused boxing cliché, but the fact remains there is often profound truth to be found in that saying. I cannot help but be reminded of the rivalry between Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez. Their first two bouts were extremely competitive, with their first match ending in a draw and Pacquiao winning the rematch by razor-close split decision. By the time they had their third fight, Marquez was viewed as an old boxer, boxing way north of his best weight where he had already proven ineffective. And on the other hand, Pacquiao was viewed as a powerhouse force for the ages, in the midst of an incredible run that saw him beat an awful lot of great boxers from 140 to 147. But at the end of the third fight, Pacquiao wound up escaping with a majority decision in a fight many, if not most, believed Marquez deserved to win. Then their fourth fight was an absolute explosion of fireworks that ultimately saw Marquez put an exclamation point on their rivalry in most dramatic fashion. It's exactly the same type of situation here. Gennady is the older fighter, fighting above his best weight class, and going up against a man many believed he deserved to win against twice, but it was so long ago, both on diverging paths, where the younger boxer was expected to win, despite the fact the younger boxer never decisively beat the old man in the previous two attempts. That fact alone leads me to believe we are in for a hell of a fight, and I am extremely fired up. This third fight is going to be for the undisputed Super Middleweight World Championship, where all four of Canelo's world titles will be on the line. With their heated and controversial history and the high stakes in play, I have no doubt whatsoever that we are going to see two determined warriors ready for combat on fight night. So who will win the third bout between Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin? I suspect the general approach from Canelo will be similar to what he did in the rematch, not the first fight. Canelo has kind of evolved his style somewhat beginning with that second Golovkin fight, so I'm expecting that same exact type of approach. Gennady is always going to try and box his way to favorable angles where he could unload with his power, so having a good idea of the game plan for each guy, it boils down to execution on fight night. Golovkin does have some similarities with Bevel in terms of style, with a nice jab, a good understanding of range, and very good overall skills and ring smarts. The one area where Golovkin is clearly inferior, however, is on the defensive end. Triple G is simply not as defensively sound as Bevel. Golovkin has never been a defensive wizard, and he's easier to connect on than Bevel. Driving this point home further, Golovkin was getting hit an awful lot in his last fight against Murata. At times, Golovkin was looking old and slow, and he almost gave the impression of a fighter who no longer had the gas tank to pull the trigger when he otherwise may have done so just a few short years back. But to his credit, Golovkin displayed his trademark heart and durability. Gennady ultimately grinded down his opponent with a blend of power and technique in a vintage methodical performance. Canelo was still throwing hard shots against Bevel, albeit most of these punches were landing on the arms and the shoulders when they did land. Triple G's leaky defense means that a lot of these power shots from Canelo won't be landing on the shoulders. There is a reasonable expectation here that a lot of these punches will find the mark and nail the target. Gennady has always had an outstanding chin, but at his age, it is difficult to believe that he is as durable as some of these bigger guys Canelo has been facing at 168 and 175. For me, all signs point to a Canelo victory. Indeed, a Canelo late round stoppage even feels like a reasonable expectation logically speaking. But at the end of the day, I still can't kick the uncanny comparisons between Pacquiao and Marquez. 
Canelo should be able to beat Gennady decisively this time around, in theory, but the same exact type of logic applied in the situation with Marquez and Pacquiao. I think that same dynamic is at play here. Styles do indeed make fights. Like I said, with this particular clash of styles and the history between the two, this is something I truly believe inherently makes this third bout between Canelo and Golovkin a potential classic in the making. I do think it's going to be competitive, and I think it's going to be entertaining. I'm fully expecting another super close and competitive contest where Canelo is once again awarded a decision, and that there is once again some controversy where many observers believe Gennady gets screwed on the cards. So for my official prediction, I'm taking Canelo Alvarez by a close and competitive 12-round decision. But what the hell do I know? I ain't exactly Quasimodo over here. But whatever happens, I am extremely fired up for this one. And may the best man win on that night. Best of luck to both Canelo and Golovkin. So who do you think will win? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this.